Hello treasure seekers. Just a quick introduction to our video. So if you're under five, you might want to watch some of our other videos that we've done for Little Angels. You might enjoy those. In fact, if you're over five, you probably enjoy them as well. So what's going to follow is our Treasure Seekers um, session now. Hope you enjoy it. You might want to do it in little parts um, and you can go back over it and there's an activity to do afterwards as well. Don't forget, we're praying for everyone in the NHS and all those people who are caring for others at the moment. So we'll keep them in our prayers throughout this session and afterwards. OK, I hope you enjoy the Treasure Seeker session I've recorded for you. and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now. Hello, Treasure Seekers. How are you? It's been a long time since I've seen you, hasn't it? I hope everything's well. I hope you had a great Easter. I hope you had a few Easter eggs and um, you had some fun as well. We miss seeing you um, and we look forward to seeing you soon. But it's, what's important at the moment is that we keep safe and sound at home and go out as little as possible. So I thought we would do uh, a little bit of um, time together and uh, we would think about... Um, some prayer time and we would also read a little bit of the Bible um, and would also do a little bit of teaching and would also do an activity together that you can do after this video and perhaps send in via your mums and dads and those people who care for you. Um, but we'll a little bit more on that later. Okay, so first of all, why don't we light a candle just to remind us that Christ is with us. So let's go and light a candle. So let's light a candle. Shall we say a prayer together? Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this time that we have to come together. We pray for all those people who are caring for and looking after people affected by the COVID-19 virus. And we pray for all those who are suffering and who are ill and who are worried at this time. We pray for St. Michael and all angels, for all the families and people who worship and serve there. And we pray that they will be kept safe and well. We pray for our families and our friends and all those we love. And we pray too for those people across the world who don't perhaps have the resources and the care that we do in this country. And we pray, Lord, that you will protect and look after them. Amen. So the Gospel reading for last Sunday was from John's Gospel. So here we go. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, 
unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, after the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, the doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The word of the Lord. So I thought we'd remind ourselves how we got to this point in the gospel story so that we could understand the text we have to today a little bit better. So what happened last week? Can you remember what big day it was? That's right, it was Easter. So we remember on um, over the Easter period that Jesus was arrested, he was crucified and he died and he was put in a tomb. Now can anyone remember what happens on Easter day on what we remember on Easter day. That's right, Jesus rose from the dead. So in our gospel accounts that we, we have, the women go to the garden um, very early in the morning where Jesus has been put to rest in a big stone tomb, uh, maybe a cave. And they arrive there and the stone is being removed from in front of of the entrance to the tomb and inside Jesus isn't there and then an angel uh, angels appear and they tell uh, the women that Jesus has risen and then Jesus appears to them and says yes I have risen tell the disciples that I will appear to them as well um, at a later date and so the women run off and they tell the disciples what's happened now it's fair to say the disciples are a bit confused and they don't really believe what the women have told them. And it's at this point that we, in a way, join the story. So the disciples are in a locked room and um, they're very frightened at this stage. They don't know what's happened. Where is Jesus? And what are they going to do next? Can you imagine? And then suddenly Jesus appears in the locked room with them and they're so relieved and they're so happy to see him. But also they're a little bit worried, you know, Jesus died. What does this all mean? Now, does anyone remember what Jesus says to them when he, when he appears in the room? That's right. He says, peace be with you. We say that a lot in the mass, don't we? Remember, peace be with you. That's a, a phrase that Jesus uses a lot. And he uses it it's particularly when he appears after his resurrection. Now, you might think that Jesus would be a bit upset and a bit disappointed with the disciples. Um, keeping in mind, you know, he's taught them everything. He's shown them all the miracles he's done. He, he told them what would happen. And yet um, they ran away when things got difficult. They've hidden. Um, they've not stood by him. They've denied him even. Um, and yet, what does he say to them? He says, peace be with you. Now, one of the disciples, Thomas, for some reason, wasn't there at the time. Uh, and when the next time they see Thomas, they'll say, you'll never believe it. But Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. And what does Thomas say? Well, Thomas says, well, you're right. I don't believe you until I can see the hole in his hands where the nails went and where I could put my hand in his side where the sword went. I, I'm just not going to believe you. I'm sorry. I'm I just, I just don't believe. And so eight days later, all of the disciples this time, including Thomas, are in the locked room and Jesus appears again. And, and again, what does he say to them? 
He says, peace be with you. That's right. Very good. And then he turns to Thomas and um, I don't think, I think very kindly he says, come on, Thomas, look, I'm here. Check me out. Look at the holes. Put your hand here. And Thomas is just overwhelmed and so joyful. And he says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus, I think, sort of quite gently in a way, sort of says, you know, that it's great that you believe, Thomas. But, you know, how blessed are those people who haven't had the time with me and you haven't had the opportunity to see me in this way and still believe in me. How blessed are they? Now, one of the things I skipped over in my in in our, our talking now um, was um, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, remember, we understand God as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, it's after Jesus um, is has risen from the dead that He's able to give us the Holy Spirit, and. When, when, do we, when do we receive the Holy Spirit in one of the, the sacraments of the church? Can anyone remember what that is? That's, that's right. It's during baptism. So when we're baptised, we receive the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to learn and encourage us in our faith so that we can believe and know God through Christ fully. So um, we got to our activity time. So I was, I was thinking about what we could do, and um, I'd like us to do try and do something together, even though we aren't uh, able to be directly together. So um, I was thinking about the collage that we made. Can you remember the big um, cross that we made? in the community room. Um, here's a picture of it coming up. So we um, put a big cross up and then we put um, key words all the way around it that were all about Lent and the period leading up to Easter. And I, what I thought we could do is we could take all those key words down, leave the cross up, um, and that we could put up new words around it that were all about um, Easter and the resurrection. Um, and the gifts of God, the gifts of Christ, um, after he's risen from the dead. So um, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about, um, well, what are those gifts? And I wonder, can you think about what some of those gifts might be? So I think perhaps, I don't know um, whether you, what you came up with, but I was thinking about the first one, um, which I was just talking about, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that fantastic, that gift of the Holy Spirit that we get after um, Christ is risen from the dead. One of the other things that um, Jesus does, which is just amazing, is, is the forgiveness of sins, which is one of the main reasons why um, he went on the cross for us. Uh, and we must always remember that and give thanks for that. Now, it's quite a complicated understanding that. So I've got an, like an image for you about that. So um, when we get things wrong, when we forget about God, when we're naughty, uh, when we forget to do the right thing, even though we know what we should be doing, it's called sin. Um, and sin is a bit like this really heavy shopping bag I've got here. It's like really heavy and you can never put it down. And every time you do something wrong, it goes in the bag and it gets heavier and heavier. Um, and you have to carry it around with you everywhere you go. Now, what Jesus does, and through the cross that he did for us, he, he, said, he said, through my love for you and your faith in me, I will take that sin away from you and put it away forever. And through the actions of Christ, we're then left free, free from the weight of that sin on us. And we can be the wonderful and, um, and enjoy the freedom of, and become the wonderful person that we were created to be. So those two things, I think that the two biggest things, perhaps, that we um, are grateful for for Jesus um, through the Easter story. 
but there's more obviously there's more um we have um jesus shows us love he overcomes evil and he overcomes death as well he reminds us how to look after our friends and our families and our neighbours and people we don't even know. He reminds us that we have to love the people, even we, the people we don't like, perhaps especially the people we don't like. And he also teaches us and shows us how to take care of the world. And one of the other things he does, he creates this amazing bridge between ourselves and God so that we're able to have that direct and beautiful relationship with him. Um, and that also means that when it's our time to go to heaven, we can be assured uh, that we will be safe with God when that time comes. So we've got loads to be thankful for. So I thought we would put, um, we would um, do some drawings of those words and those images. Um, and then what you could do is you could do those and then your mums and your dads or your carers could quickly take a photograph of them and send them to me. And I'll cut them out, put them, make them big on a colour paper um, and cut them out and put them on the collage around the cross. And then we can update that. And that can be about um, Easter and the resurrection. So uh, I've done a, a handy and very bad example for you. <laughs> OK, I only had two colour pens, so don't judge me. OK, OK, so that's a, a very bad example of what you could do. So you could do, for example, hope and colour it in, make it look beautiful, take a photograph, get your mum, dad, your carer to send that to me and I'll get that up on the board. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a new picture of the, I'll take a new photograph of the new picture and we can look at that and we can do something fun together, even though we can't be physically together. We can also learn about the gifts of God and the gifts of Christ in this Easter period. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that's a fun thing to do and what I'll do is I'll send an email um, out about that and we'll pick um, words and names and things together so we don't all do the same thing. Okay so it's coming to the end of our time together um, so I just wanted to say that we miss you, um, we hope you're well and keeping safe. It's difficult at this time when we want to go out and see our friends and we want to play and we want things to be normal. But at the moment, the most important thing we can do is to, to stay safe, stay in our homes, um, not see our friends uh, and maybe all of our family. Um, and that in that way, we're protecting and looking after other people, which is what Jesus would want us to do. So we're missing you. We can't wait to see you again. We pray for you every day. Um, and can I ask you to do two things? One of them is be very good for your mums and dads and listen to what they're saying. Yes. OK. And the other thing is occasionally every day say a prayer to God and say thank you for everything. And I look forward to seeing you again soon, either in a video or in person. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see you. All right. Take care. Bye for now. Every blessing. Bye for now.